When it comes to selecting skateboard bearings, choosing the best can be difficult. Now I know a lot of you know things about bearings through marketing or shop talk, but that could be hype or hearsay. There's so many different features that go into bearings that make one better than another that we need to know about. You know, there's ABEC ratings, which is really common. There's now skate ratings. There's Swiss and ceramic, metal shields, rubber seals, nylon retainers, metal cages, and it just goes on. It makes this whole ordeal of choosing the best bearing really difficult. And even when we think we've got the best bearings, we also need to know how to properly maintain them to keep them clean and continue to roll fast. So be sure to check out the video on how to clean bearings and the video on lubricants. Now before we can put an end to all this confusion and madness, we need to know a bit more about how bearings work and why we use them. So let's get started. In the early stages of the evolution of bearings, ancient civilizations used a type of bearing in the form of log rollers to transport heavy objects. Now let's fast forward to our modern time, we can see how we've modified their design to arrive at the bearings we commonly use today. That looks pretty familiar, doesn't it? If we didn't use bearings, our wheels would have tremendous amounts of friction rubbing on the axle. With rolling element ball bearings, we nearly eliminate all of the friction. Now let's get you familiar with the individual parts that create a bearing. A C-ring holds a removable metal shield in place on the outer race or ring. There's also an inner race. There are typically seven steel balls that are spaced out by a nylon ball retainer or sometimes a metal cage. And you'll also find removable Buna rubber seals. Now that you know all the parts that go into a bearing, we can now get into more detail starting with the ABEC rating scale and other ratings. So what is ABEC and what does it do? And maybe you've heard that it doesn't apply to skateboarding. Well, does it or does it not apply to skateboarding? First off, ABEC was started by the American Bearing Manufacturers Association to set standards for dimensions. Basically what was happening in the past was that manufacturers that needed a bearing would just make whatever size bearing they needed in any dimension. So eventually this just created a huge mess of different sizes and dimensions out there. So the ABMA created the Annular Bearing Engineering Committee to set standards for dimensions. And what they did is they told manufacturers who wanted to make bearings or needed a bearing, here are the dimensions that you need for precision bearings. And if you want to know the different ratings between them, here is a scale that rates them. So now that we know what ABEC is, how does it work? ABEC only rates tolerances. Now you're probably thinking, well, that's great. What the hell are tolerances? Well, before I go into tolerances, the word rating is probably not the best word to use because ABEC doesn't rate the bearings from worst to best. It's more of a grade or a class. But for the sake of conversation and this video, I'll just continue to use the word rating because it's already set in place. Here are the dimensions and tolerances for an ABEC 3 rated bearing. The outer diameter is 22 millimeters. Those tiny numbers mean that the part needs to be no smaller than 3 ten thousandths of an inch. The width is 7 millimeters and the inside bore is 8 millimeters. Here's where ABEC really comes in and rates a bearing. They're looking for the distance between the balls and the inner ring and the outer ring and that measurement gives a bearing its rating. And other ABEC ratings have their own allowable tolerances. Now you know what tolerances are, what ABEC is, and what it does, and how its only purpose is to set standards for sizes and dimensions. So how does ABEC affect performance? because that's all we really care about, right? Well, if ABEC only measures and rates tolerances, can an ABEC 3 be better than an ABEC 7? Well, the answer is yes, because ABEC only measures tolerances. It does not rate speed, durability, ball sphericity, torsional loads, axial loads, surface finishes, torque, uh, lubricants. It only measures I think you're getting it. So the ABEC rating does not apply to skateboarding because of the tolerances set in the ABEC scale and what skaters do to bearings. But that's not to say that tolerances are not important to skateboarding. Tolerances are very crucial to skateboarding and more so in longboard skateboarding. Tolerances need to be adjusted outside of the ABEC scale in order for bearings to really be able to handle what skateboarders do to them. Just because we use bearings in skateboards doesn't mean that they are actually made for skateboarding. So some manufacturers have created their own skate specific rating. Now although this is great for the industry, we still don't know what this means for consumers. You know, we don't know if they've changed the tolerances, the raceways, the steel grade, or the hardness, and even the surface finish, which is really important. But most important besides all those is probably the lubricant, but that's another video. But anyways, these skate ratings, you know, for consumers, we're still left in the dark and we just don't know what they mean. Now you really know what ABEC is and how it doesn't apply to skateboarding and how important the right tolerances are for bearings. And that a skate rating can be vague or have no real explanation at all. But what's good is that people are becoming more aware that ABEC doesn't apply to skateboarding. 
Well, because of this, is there any wonder why companies are coming out with Swiss bearings more? What is a Swiss bearing? And is there a misconception that Swiss is better than everything else? Well, let's find out. Right away, you're probably wondering, what does cheese have to do with bearings? Well, we can actually learn a lot from cheese. Now here I've got cheddar and Swiss cheese. Now you might've noticed right away that this was Swiss cheese. Well, what makes it Swiss cheese? Well, first off, the ingredients gives it its color and taste, and while it's being made, it gets its world-famous holes or bubbles in it. So without a doubt, this is Swiss cheese. Now, cheddar cheese has different ingredients, color, and taste that separates it from Swiss cheese. Well, let's say I wanted to call it Swiss cheese. Would I be wrong? Yeah, because Swiss cheese has to be made a certain way in order for it to be called Swiss cheese. Now, let's take a look at so-called Swiss bearings. Does there have to be a specific material to go into a bearing in order for it to be called Swiss? No. Does it have to function a certain way in order for it to be called Swiss? No. Are there rules set by an agency of the Swiss government that states that Swiss bearings have to be made to an exact specification? No. Is there something about Swiss bearings that make them better than American or Chinese bearings? No. In my experience from doing all my testing and researching, no bearing is better than one that is made in the USA. And Swiss bearings are not a category like Swiss cheese and are, and are not of a higher ABEC rating than all other bearings. You know, the word Swiss for some reason has given the skateboard community the impression that Swiss bearings are superior to all other bearings, and that's just not true. Swiss is basically a name to get you, the consumer, to buy these bearings. It doesn't matter where a bearing is made that makes it better. A Chinese bearing can easily be better than a Swiss bearing. What makes a bearing better than another is the quality of the material and the manufacturing process. Before I get into what a good bearing is, I should briefly talk about ceramic bearings. Now, what is the value of a ceramic material over steel? Well, ceramic doesn't rust, it can withstand higher temperatures, it's lighter than steel, and it's hotter than some steel grades. So, is there an advantage to having ceramic balls over steel balls? Well, I should first mention that ceramic bearings are actually hybrid bearings, meaning that the balls are ceramic, but the inner and outer ring are still steel, which means that ceramic bearings can rust. Now, sure, ceramic balls can withstand higher temperatures, but steel balls never get hot enough to deform or affect performance. And yeah, ceramic balls are lighter than steel balls, but the weight difference is so minimal that you won't ever notice. And I should mention that ceramic material is more brittle than steel, which means it can crack, chip, and break. Now, ceramic balls are harder than some steel balls, but not all. And here's a compression test we did to prove it. What we used is two pieces of hardened tool steel with little divots to hold a ball and press them in a PHI press. If you look closely, you can see this commonly found steel ball crack. This ball failed at barely under 8,000 pounds. Now here's a top of the line ceramic ball that failed at about 8,200 pounds. And here it is again. You can't see much happening here with this American made ball, but we were able to get the press up to 22,000 pounds before the ball failed. As you can see, ceramic balls are not harder than steel balls and don't really have an advantage over steel, if any. And you also know what ABEC is and how important tolerances are and that Swiss is basically just a name and they're not better than all other bearings. So now let's look into more detail about bearings and see what makes one better than another. Here we have three different types of covers or closures, a rubber seal, a non-removable metal shield, and a removable metal shield. Despite what a lot of people believe, removing any of these does not make a bearing faster. Because one side of the bearing faces inside the wheel, bearing brands probably figured it wouldn't hurt the bearing to only have one seal or shield. Plus they can save money by only having one seal or shield on the bearing, plus they can save money on machining by only machining one side of the outer ring to hold a cover. Whatever the reason, lubricants can still escape out of the bearing which can ruin the bearing's performance. Contaminants like dirt and moisture can find their way into a bearing because the inner bore of the inner ring does not fit tight on the axle. I should also mention that very minimal amounts of lubricants or contaminants can enter or escape between the inner ring and the cover. Now you can see how important seals and shields are. Another important attribute to be aware of is how well a bearing can handle axial and torsional loads. While maneuvering a skateboard, bearings experience these loads and it can damage the balls and raceways. What happens is as the wheels move, the balls can end up riding on the edge of the raceway, and if the loads are big enough, the balls and raceways can get scratched or indented. To see if a bearing can handle axial or torsional loads, we need to look at raceway depths. If you look closely, you can see that these two have slightly deeper raceways compared to the others. Deeper raceways with good tolerances make a bearing more solid, allowing the bearing to operate more efficiently. A shallow raceway does not cause less friction because a ball's footprint remains the same no matter where it touches in the raceway. Although deeper raceways are better for skating, we can't assume that bearings that have them will function optimally because we still have to consider other important factors like steel grade, material hardness, polishing, and tolerances. Speaking of polishing, you can actually see the different degrees of surface finishes on the raceways. Well-polished balls and raceways create smoother and harder contact surfaces. This can result in higher achievable speeds, but again, other factors still need to apply in order for a well-polished ball to operate optimally. These are just some of the things that can make any bearing better than another. 
even better than ceramic, Swiss, or ABEC 9 rated bearings. Now you know the difference between Swiss, ceramic, and ABEC rated bearings, and how one bearing can be better than another. From our testing and researching, our findings show that American steel ball bearings are far and away the best. What you probably are not aware of is how trucks, wheels, and bearing spacers have a dramatic effect on bearing performance. So be sure to check out the video on bearing spacers.